So here's my fume hood under construction. It's basically just a, a three-sided box with a lid on it. Um, the, the top is, is a platform that I had for something else and I just, I just screwed some sides on it, three sides. On the front there will be um, Lexan doors eventually and I've got a bathroom exhaust fan. I just cut the I just cut the hole out there. There it is. There's the piece that came out of the hole. I just cut the hole out to mount the uh, bathroom exhaust fan up here, and I'll run a, a piece of uh, flexible tubing off to a to a goodly distance from where I'm working from the exhaust of it. And I will probably mount an outlet strip up here to uh, plug the fan into and uh, I need to put some lights in it. It'll be dark inside so I'll probably put some uh, LED strip lighting inside to light it up and uh, have some outlets to plug in uh, things like uh, the blender and the uh, hot plate. So it's about two feet by two feet square which I think is going to be big enough for most of what I do. So it's coming along slowly. A little bit more gets done each day. All right, I actually got to do a little work on my fume hood today. I think I have breathed enough sulfur or nitrogen dioxide gas to last a lifetime. So I need to get this working. So it's just a wooden box, basically a three-sided wooden box, with uh, well, you know, I guess four-sided counting the top and I've got a bathroom uh, vent fan mounted up there I've got a uh, outlet strip mounted up here right now only the vent fans plugged into it but I'm gonna put some uh, holes up here to run the cords through for hot plates and lights and stuff there's gonna have to be lights inside here because it'll be a little dark um, and uh, of course there'll be hot plates in here and they'll need power and I'm going to get, I, this is the only piece of uh, plexiglass I've got, and it is just not the right size for making doors for on the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a couple pieces of plexiglass cut to size, and I'll hinge them so there'll be a door on either side that'll open out. And uh, there'll be a little bit of an air gap underneath so that there, there will be airflow even with the doors closed so that it'll take the, uh, take the fumes out of here. And... Uh, it's coming along. I'm gonna look into uh, look into the plexiglass tomorrow and hinges for it. And once I have those on, it's pretty much done. I just need to drill a couple holes in the top to run cords out. And oh, and I need a I need a three inch piece of uh, flexible tubing to uh, to run the fumes off to a safe distance away. So I need to get that too. So I need to put that on my list. I need hinges, I need uh, plexiglass doors, and I need three inch flexible tubing. And then I think I'm gonna be in business with a fume hood. And I don't have to constantly shift around this way and that to try and stay upwind of whatever reaction I'm doing. So that will be a beautiful thing. Because I'm tired of that, and I'm tired of getting the stuff in my face. Um, the, uh, the fumes have already ruined the coatings on one pair of glasses. I can only imagine what they're doing to my lungs, so uh, I got to get this done if I'm going to keep doing this uh, gold recovery stuff. But it's coming along. So maybe tomorrow, by tomorrow or the next day, it'll be done. Got some major progress going on my homemade fume hood here. I got doors on it. I was down at my local Ace and found out they will uh, they will cut plexiglass to size. In this size, it's only about five bucks a sheet. So I got a couple sheets cut and I got a few hinges and uh, made some little latches here. And now I have doors. Got doors on it. I also found some uh, flexible aluminum ductwork. I got two eight-foot sections of it. Hopefully, that's going to be enough. And let's see, I don't remember if in the last segment I had the fan wired in or not, but the fan is wired in and it runs. I've got LED strip lighting on order to go up inside. So I've got some light inside. And uh, this sucker's almost done. It's just a, 
just a few more things to do. I need to I need to peel the film off of the plexiglass so I can see through it. But uh, otherwise, it's coming right along. I have myself a fume hood in in a bit. I just dropped some gold over here and. <laughs> I'm tired of breathing sulfur dioxide fumes. Even this far away from it, I get the occasional whiff of it. So doing that inside the fume hood will be a wonderful thing. Now the lighting's terrible. But, uh... Anyway, this fume hood was made from an old uh, two foot by two foot platform that I had some equipment bolted on up here. And when I got rid of the equipment, I just reused the platform as the top of the fume hood. I bolted uh, or screwed some 2x2 two two sides on it, one on each side and one on the back, to enclose it on three sides. And uh, cut a hole in the top and uh, um, caulked the fan in place. It's just held in place with silicone bathtub caulk, basically. And I screwed down the, uh, the power strip here. And um, I will drill some holes in the top so cords for the internal lighting and uh, hot plates can come up to the, to the outlet strip. And, uh, you know, put the ductwork on it and it'll be done. I could probably start using it tomorrow if I didn't want to wait for the lighting. We'll see what I'm doing tomorrow and how stinky it is. Maybe I'll start using it before it's completely finished. For my own health. Okay, fume hood progress report. I've got the doors on it. I'm painting the inside of it. I'm painting it white. And this is uh, both for protection, protecting the wood from any splashes of nasty chemicals, but also to just improve the, uh, the vision inside it at, in, in the dark or even in bright sunlight because it's pretty dark in there, and I have some LED strip lighting I've installed. I've got some installed over here, and a couple strips of it installed up there. It's pretty bright, but the dark interior was just sort of soaking up the light. So I'm thinking that if I paint the inside white, the light from the strip lights will bounce around inside and illuminate things better. So that's what I'm working on right now. It's, uh, it's coming along. It's almost done. I just want to get the paint on it couple coats maybe and uh, it'll be pretty much ready for prime time I just need to uh, do a few other minor things on it and find a permanent home for it on my workbench and uh, route the uh, the exhaust pipe and uh, it's ready to go so almost there almost there alrighty I got the first coat on the inside I think I'll put a second coat on because uh, the wood's showing through a little bit as it dries. I'll put another coat on and then I will call that done. I will probably paint the outside too at some point, but right now I just wanted to get the inside done so that things will show up better inside it. Especially if I'm making videos of what I'm doing inside there, it'd be nice to be able to see what's going on. So one more coat and I'm calling the inside done. Well, there's the second coat on, and it's looking pretty darn good. Let's see how it looks when it dries. I don't know if it'll need a third. Maybe I'll put a third on just for added protection from chemical splashes. But it looks pretty darn good. It's amazing how slapping a fresh coat of paint on an old pile of lumber can make it look uh, like a million bucks. That's, that's a secret real estate agents have known for a long time. So if you want to get top dollar for your house, just slap a fresh coat of paint on it and it'll more than pay for itself. And it's, it's easy too. So it's coming right along. Well, I decided to go ahead and throw a coat of paint on the outside of the box too. At least the parts of the outside I can get to while it's in this position while I'm painting the inside. So it's starting to look like a piece of professional laboratory equipment here. My goodness, it's amazing what a coat of paint or two will do. 
Yeah, I decided to paint the outside since, you know, who knows when I'm going to find the ambition to get the, uh, the paint and stuff out again. Although I do have some closet doors I need to paint in the house. Hmm. So I suppose it'll be out again pretty soon. But while I'm at it, I decided to throw some paint on the outside. I'll probably get another coat on it before I'm done. You know, the inside's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to call it good enough. Get another coat on the outside and... That'd be it for today. This thing's getting close to being uh, operational. I love it. Okay, here it is. Fully painted inside and out. I decided to go ahead and paint the outside while I had the painting stuff out. Might as well just get it over with. I think it looks good. It looks like a professional piece of equipment. I mean, I looked into buying fume hoods, used ones, new ones, whatever. I looked on Craigslist. I looked on Facebook Marketplace. I looked wherever I could, and they are expensive. And I thought, you know what? I could bang something together out of some scrap lumber for a few bucks and have, have a nice fume hood. So that's what I did. And, you know, the coat of paint on it really really sort of finishes it off, makes it look professional. How much have I got into this? Um, I think 10 bucks for the plexiglass doors. About, uh, what was it, about $12.95 for the bathroom fan. And a couple bucks for hinges. And that's basically it. The rest of it I built with stuff I had laying around. I mean, the top is a up here is the equipment platform that I was about to throw out. Then I thought, oh, wait a minute. Why don't I just cut up some plywood and stick it on the sides and I can make a fume hood out of it. So that's what I did. So, yeah. So I've got maybe, uh, I don't know, 30-some bucks invested in it. Oh, yeah, and about another 8 bucks for the LED strip lighting inside. So call, call it 40 bucks. For about 40 bucks, I've got a nice fume hood. It's a little over two foot by two foot on the inside. And I will have it hooked up and operating real soon now. All right, all right, all right, check it out. My fume hood is completed. Yes. So I made a few changes. I moved the uh, I moved the outlet strip from on top to on the side, and rather than drilling holes up there for the the plugs to come out, because I figured it might be a a lot of cables in the way going up to the ceiling and out, I I put it on the side, and I'll just run it through the gap under the doors, the air gap under the doors. So I'll do that. And I got the uh, I got the vent line installed, and it runs out to the edge of my Easy Up over here. And up over here like so. Wonder what the neighbors think of it. I don't know. They probably already think I'm some sort of crazy mad scientist, so who knows. It's kind of pointed towards their house. They may worry a little bit. But hopefully it'll get the uh, fumes away from me and out from under the easy up. Because they tend to accumulate down here. Right inconveniently at about head height. So, yeah. That's good. We'll see, I might have to move that around. You know, depending on the prevailing winds, I might have to move it around just to another part of the easy up or something, I don't know, we'll see. Or maybe just run it out on the ground off into the corner of the yard or something. We'll see how it goes. And I got the lights on in there. So it's nice and bright, it's a dark day outside, so it's nice and bright inside, which is good. Uh, lights over here and lights up here. Fans going. So I've got my hot plate in there. Not doing anything at the moment, but uh, it's ready to go. Maybe tomorrow I'll do something good and stinky in there and see how well it works. I need to do a little better job of routing the cables. I'll put some uh, some some tie downs on the wall and and uh, some. Uh, wire ties and route, route the cables better so it doesn't turn into a rat's nest. But I'm pretty happy with it. Hey! It's working. It's installed. It's ready to go. And it looks damn good, too. 
it really looks damn good. It looks like a professional piece of lab equipment, and I built it myself out of basically scrap lumber and a few odds and ends from the hardware store. And it's going to protect my lungs and my eyes and my skin. So it's a beautiful thing. So you'll see this in operation in future videos. And I hope it inspires some other amateur chemists and backyard experimenters to uh, build their own. Because really, you shouldn't be breathing that crap. It's bad. I knew when it dissolved the, the um, coatings on my glasses, my very expensive transitions glasses, that <laughs> I needed to do something. <laughs> I shouldn't be exposing myself to those chemicals. So you shouldn't be either. So this was a dead easy build. It wasn't expensive. It was quick. And it looks really good. So give it a shot. Build your own. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.